As you guys can tell, I've been a little bit more political than I usually am. Some of you guys have been following me for a while, especially when I cover the chili thing. And, you know, I've never actually said much about, you know, politics. Maybe a couple times and you know, some people that did unsubscribe because I voted a different way than they did. Um, because I, you know, have different principles and I don't want to change them. And I'm going to tell you, this didn't happen overnight. Uh, this has been going on for a long time. Um, you know, I went from uh, pretty much as blue as you can be, probably further, to now here I am going from purple to red. And I know there's a lot that goes with that, and I understand, but I'm not here to argue with you about politics because you're allowed to do whatever you want. This is your vote. You do what you want. I'm not going to tell you you can't do it. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of misinformation going around on both sides. And, you know, it's good me coming from, you know, blue for many years, uh, especially I was a militant atheist. Uh, to what I am now, I'm a Christian, um, almost pretty much conservative at this point, especially with a lot of the things that's going on. But I'm not here to preach hate, and some people will take it as hate uh, because of the political climate that we have currently. Now, what am I talking about? And this will probably put me in some hot water because I've been um, <laughs> I've been called out before for even hinting at it. Now, I want to talk about uh, some of the stuff that's going on on YouTube with the Mr. Beast and uh, Chris Tyson situation. Now, you're probably wondering who is Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast is one of the biggest YouTubers on the platform. I think he is the biggest. Uh, he's known for, you know, charity, his chocolates, his over-the-top YouTube videos, where he goes and builds hundreds of houses for people. I think it was in South Africa, maybe, South America. I, I don't know. Uh, he does some crazy things, um, and it's, it's really wild, and it's pretty cool. I always thought Mr. Beast was a pretty decent guy. I never seen much controversy outside some people saying that he's acting like a white savior, and I don't think that's fair. Um, you know, somebody that's helping out, especially one of the videos he was helping out um, some people with homes, and they happen to be black. Um, I don't see a problem with that. Uh, helping people is great. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. It shouldn't be um, politicized. But this is. This is actually changes a lot of that because, to be honest, it's disgusting. Chris has a, well, <laughs> Mr. Beast has a friend that's been with him probably since the beginning. And I think he also helped run the channel uh, named Chris Tyson, or now Ava. Um, here's the thing. I'm not going to be polite when it comes to pronouns. I'm not really not going to and I'm not going to be polite about this whole situation because it's disgusting and it's awful we've been seeing a lot of people coming out as child groomers uh, usually these people celebrities politicians TV uh, well influencers you name it there's people coming out as child groomers or worse I don't like that I don't like that I don't think these people are human I don't I don't they're not people they're monsters and I'm not going to classify them or give them respect at all. Zero. And that's one of the problems, too, I'm going to talk about. So Chris Tyson, um, again, I said it's Ava. Uh, he is transgender. Um, he had a wife and a kid, and he left and decided to be a transgender woman, um, which he's still a man. And I'm not going to give him the respect or courtesy of using his pronouns. That's not going to happen. Uh, not with this. Your 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 whole respect goes out the door as soon as this came out. And there's been people talking about this for a while, but now the evidence is pretty pretty hardcore. You could see it, and it's awful. Over the weekend, there was a lot of logs released, those Discord logs showing just the depravity of what was going on um, on these uh, actual uh, messages. Uh, Chris was basically grooming kids. Grooming kids to the point where um, he was <laughs> talking about really nasty things, calling kids daddy, talking about their genitals, uh, sending nudes, uh, getting Snapchats, and funneling kids into that for pretty much merchandise or stuff like that. Because Mr. Beast, again, um, it's a huge channel. He works with it. He has connections. And, you know, kids like Mr. Beast. And that's the thing. That's the thing. 
the craziest thing about this is Mr. Beast is a channel where tons of kids really like it. I'm going to tell you this. I have a nephew and a niece that love Mr. Beast. And I'm not going to let them watch Mr. Beast at this point. It's not going to happen because Mr. Beast was actually involved in it. And we can prove that too. So what it started out was um, there were some allegations that Chris was grooming children. And like I said, it's been going on a while. Uh, Blair White, which is a transgender influencer that I follow, she actually wrote right here, I called the Chris Tyson situation over a year ago. The trans community attacked me for it. Now they're crying at the damage Tyson has done to them. Maybe the reason they lost respect is they constantly defend pedos and treat anyone amongst them with common sense like shit. Now, like I said, you might call me transphobe. I follow trans people. I like trans people. Um, I don't agree with some of it. I don't particularly think I should call you a woman if you're a man. And I don't think you should participate in women's sports if you're a man or go into a women's, women's bathrooms if you're a man. You, you just don't do that. And I, I think some people will agree with that. Some people that's more progressive, they're like, and they don't see a problem with it. But I do. I do. I, I do. And I'm not going to change uh, my principles to... Uh, please anybody about that because I think it's disgusting. I think it's awful. Um, but yeah, like I said, I, I do have uh, people that I follow. And one of my favorite movies stars a trans sexual icon, and that's the Rocky Horror t Picture Show. Planning on getting a tattoo here in the next couple of months with that. So, like I said, Chris has been uh, into some big, big problems. And one of the things that came out with along with these Discord records and these posts was really awful things and there was tons of them and i'm not going to show you them because it's nasty it's gross and you're going to want to take a shower probably i'm going to take a shower after i get off this video because it feels nasty but um like i said chris has been called out um there's a lot of people trying to damage control one of the things that really got me um whenever it was confirmed that he did these things and as many kids you have people trying to uh, defend him, especially the first thing he called out is when Moist Critical was talking about Chris, a man, uh, and called him a his, and they was mad because they misgendered him. And here's my, what I'm thinking. A guy was grooming kids, which is terrible, awful, and the one thing you're really pissed off about is misgendering him? He's not a him. He's not a she. He's a monster. No respect for monsters. We don't do that. I'll show you right here. Cacti Empress. She said 22 minutes and it doesn't once prefer her by her actual pronouns. So disappointing to see Moist Critical refuse to be actual ally of the LGBT community just to appease the transphobe in his audiences. Uh, literally every other person got referred to by their pronoun, pronouns except for Ava. Fuck you. No, no, no. Go. go. You need your hard drive check. Um, there's no, there's no defending this. Um, you know, <laughs> I've never seen anything as ass backwards as what I've seen this last few months. So Dr. Disrespect, whenever the English came around that this was a possibility that he was talking to a minor, you had people head over hill coming from in, those parts of the community because he was a white straight man. And as a lot of it was said like that, and you know, they basically tried to crucify him immediately. And a lot of us were saying, hey, we want to see the proper evidence. And I think that's the right thing to do. It wasn't defending him. Nobody was defending him. I mean, there probably was some people, but I wasn't. I wanted to see the evidence. And when Chris comes out, and it seems to be a double standard for some of the social media, especially on Reddit, um, if a person that is in a protective class, in this case, he would be in the transgender group, um, yeah, yeah, I don't get it. I don't know why you're trying to cover for a monster. And there's a lot of people that did and called us transphobes for even talking about it, calling us terrible people. And once the evidence came out, and I waited for the evidence because that's the proper thing to do, these people still are trying to cover for him. And there's a lot of people said there's a lot of people attacking the trans community. And yeah, I see that. I see that. But there's also people attacking, you know, people that's not in the trans community all the time. It's, it's the same on both sides. 
Um, pe people on both sides are equally responsible for being assholes to each other. And there's no covering for Dr. Disrespect. There's no covering for Chris Tyson. There's none of that. These guys are monsters that grooms kids. And one of the things that really got me too is to kind of add on to that, um, you know, a lot of people said, well, Chris has mental problems, and I think he does, really do. Uh, and it even came up on Drama Alert that Chris's sister came out about this. Now, Chris Tyson, here it is. He's eluded and disturbed and one added 100% a fetish. Uh, I'm a sibling. Can I use the correct pronouns? Told me that he got fully aroused when he secretly stole my female clothes and put them on. He's deluded and disturbed and has 100% a fetish. He's narcissistic and professionals have told him he needs a full psyche vow. Yes. Yes, you do. Yes, you really do. You really, really do. Um, it's a fetish. That's true. And it makes begs the question if there's a lot of these people who do this, if it is a fetish, you know, it's a possibility. It's a possibility. But I'm not going to blame the whole trans community because of one person. But there is a lot of this going on in a lot of different communities. So I'm not going to say, hey, it's just the trans community is doing this. No, it's not. It's a lot of different communities. Um, but I'm not going to be like, hey, it's just the trans people because that's wrong. I'm not going to do that. Not going to do that. So you're probably wondering, what did Mr. Beast have to do with it? Well, during some of the disclosure of the Discord logs, I'm sorry, I just can't stop stuttering. Whenever I get nervous talking about stuff like this, I just like, uh. But anyways, you're probably wondering, what does Mr. Beast have to do with this? Well, as somebody that's a partner with Chris for a very long time, um, it seems like Mr. Beast was kind of covering himself whenever he offered a investigation after previously saying that Chris wasn't a nightmare for him. And uh, people were just pretty much, uh, I guess, trying to get attention. I forget why, kind of paraphrasing that one. But Chris, you find out that Mr. Beast actually knew for a long time. Again, for drama alert, Mr. Beast and Chris Tyson's Discord leaks. Here we go. So this was actually in the Discord. I don't think I pull it up right here. Let's well, let's try to read a little bit here. Um, discount milk. No, he's not. His penis is bi isn't big enough. I know, Mr. Beast. No, I know his penis size and is huge. Uh, Beast, are you gay? The moment you deep throat a whole cock. Discount milk. I deep throat. Chris, the meme god. I don't know how old this person is. But it's pretty fucking disturbing. Here it is right here. Uh, I would like to say stay anonymous, but Chris Tyson was texting me back in 2020 when I was 14. I think this is from um, a person named Lava. Uh, this is where it originally came out. Uh, I think it's Lava maybe. maybe. Um, but they came out and said it wasn't really grooming. Um, and it was. And here's the thing. If you're a kid... Um, you probably don't know what's grooming until later on. Um, and it will finally set in when you start seeing this. And I think this is what this was. Uh, this is after the fact I shown you here where Mr. Beast was actually associated with this. And it's hard to tell what kind of damage this is going to do. There is damage control currently. And I do believe a lot of these Discord messages were wiped from Discord. But the fact that you have this kid that was 14 and talk to like that. And it's hard to tell what happened. I know there was a case where Chris was uploading pictures of his baby. He had pooping. In video. That's that's bad. That's really bad. It's terrible. It's an awful thing. Um, the best thing that could happen. And I'm not going to say happen. Is you know. A forever trip to uh, the psych, uh, psych hospital. Maybe, or a wood chipper if he accidentally falls into one. Um, but the fact is, like I said, you have a, a kid. I would like to stay anonymous, but Chris Tyson was texting me back in 2020 when I was 14. I'm 18 now. I commented on one of his tweets, and he saw and messaged me. When I was young, I couldn't see how he was grooming and manipulating me, but looking back at it, I can see. And I think that's a lot of cases, too. Like, you hear about these things, and... Uh, and it's hard to tell how many unknown voices um, that, you know, had this happen to them. Could you imagine? I mean, there's a lot of people that this probably happened to, and they're not talking about it. 
and later on down the road, they're going to dis <laughs> they're they're going to discover that hey, uh, this is fucked up and it's going to hurt them long term. It's mental health issues, and we cover mental health quite a bit on here. And you know, this is a mental health issue. Uh, it's going to cause a lot of damage. And I say this too about some other things when it comes to the whole movement in terms of transgender. When I see the whole pictures of you know, people getting their limbs cut off, cut off, stuff like that. Um, I find it really disturbing. And I, I take a look at it now. I say, hey, maybe it's something now they want to do. But what's it going to be like, you know, 10, 15 years down the road when they discover maybe that's not the right way? And it's basically a permanent uh, solution to a temporary, what could be a temporary problem. Now, here I say, if you want to transition, that's fine. That's really fine. Uh, I think you should think really hard about it. You should probably think about the future before you do it because there are cases where people are wanting to detransition and you really can't. And I don't know if you guys have seen this. I don't know if you've seen the surgeries, the, the pictures of these people. It looks terrible. Um, Gaze Against Groomers, I believe, has a movie coming out. Um, it's a documentary. And I think it's probably going to be pretty good. Let me see if we can find Gaze Against Groomers here. Um, I follow them here right now. And this is it right here. Gaze Against uh, Groomers is proud to present the new updated trailer for our first film, Sacred Honor Media, and badass D. Gooder, Gooders leaving Amy. And that's the name of it. This is actually about a person that transitioned um, and does talk about how, you know, they thought they was tricked. Oh, no. They, was, they thought they was tricked into doing these things. And... Um, like I said, it's a permanent solution to a temporary issue for some people. And I do say eventually there's going to be more cases. And what I'm worried about is these people um, becoming a statistic. Um, it's, it's scary. It's really scary. Uh, and like I said, there's a lot of people that's done it that are perfectly fine with it and it makes them feel good. Um, but I think if, you know, especially if you're a child, like a child, and you do hear cases where kids are getting puberty blockers and uh, gender-affirming care, stuff like that, surgeries and stuff. And these are kids, right? These are kids. Um, and it's bad. It's bad. And it really is. It really is. I think uh, there should be more look into this. But here's the thing. You start talking about it. You become labeled the bigot. You become labeled the transphobia. You become the person that hates the LGBTQ. Which here, the th again, I don't, I don't, I don't. Um, I, <laughs> I don't. I literally don't. Um, like I said, I, I don't look at the trans community the same way as I look at the gay community. I kind of consider them two different things. Um, but I don't hate them. I don't. Um, I really don't. I love gay people. Uh, despite people saying, hey, you made a gay joke, you're a homophobe, and that's fine, you can say what you want. Um, but this is a problem, this is a really big problem. Um, and like I said, Blair White, she's transsexual, I think, transgender, I think. I think she had the surgeries as well. And I'm referring to her pronouns, by the way. Um, she even spots this stuff out. There's a lot of people that's in the transgender community that spots this stuff out. And, you know, with this new case of Chris, Chris Tyson, there are a lot of people that's attacking the transgender uh, community. And, you know, I don't think it's completely fair. Um, me, like I said, I, I particularly don't agree with it. Um, I don't like it, uh, but I'm not going to hate you and openly go in the streets and wish for you to get, uh, you know, deleted. I'm not going to do that. It's not how it works. Um, ultimately, it's basically how I feel like it. Um, you know, God will take care of whatever needs to be taken care of uh, when we die. And I hope you guys, uh, if you're not, that's okay. Um, God's going to be able to make the judgment ultimately, right? Um, and this, again, you can disagree with me. It's fine. I'm not here to fight. Um, I'm not here to hate. But I do want to give my concerns for these things because I never talk about them. Um, but like I said, I've, I've, I've done a little bit of... Uh, research myself into this stuff and the Chris Tyson thing and how it's attached to the trans community, the LGBTQ community is not completely fair. Um, it is awful, but you know this is how basically you see stereotypes are being made. Um, there's stereotypes for everybody, 
and this is probably one of them that's going to be attached to the trans community and you know, it is what it is it is what it is if more stuff like this keeps coming out and you see the whole fight for you know men to go into uh women's bathrooms or women's spaces and yeah obviously there's a problem and it should be looked into all right guys thank you so much for watching i love you i'll see you soon